Next piece in line is the cylinder head. This is really a no-brainer part, but it's going to be harder to hold than it will be to machine. 3 16ths of an inch thick, 031 step on the front. This 999 minus 2 diameter right here is intended to go down inside the cylinder. So although that is not functionally critical, for alignment purposes it probably is best to keep it close. The 3 16ths and the 031 stacks up to 218 on the thickness and the part that they give you is about 265. So that rules out a pressure turning operation which is what I was going to do. I'm going to hold it in a three jaw chuck, true it up best I can, face off about a sixteenth off the back side, this side, and turn that step on. This is also an ideal opportunity if you've watched some of the other videos like the uh, valve cover. It's a great time to make the gaskets at the same time. So I'm going to start with the gasket, and the gasket's going to be easy. I'm going to make it out of a piece of one inch stainless steel. Put a little chamfer on the end and use it as a punch. That way I can fit the gasket material over whatever boss I turn and trim it off after the fact. Let's do it. I've chucked up a piece, or <laughs> checked up a piece. I have a piece of 1 inch diameter 316 stainless steel in a collet, a 1 inch collet. Uh, you can see there's a small turned section on that from a previous job. I'm going to turn that off and put an internal chamfer on this part and use it as a punch to do the one inch diameter ID of the gasket material. If you use a chamfer tool and draw the inside of a part like that out you can expect that OD to crown check it with your fingernail check it with a file but make sure it's flat before you use it as a punch let's punch the material out with that part as is Okay, the hard part is done. OD and holes, we will do that at the same time we turn the cylinder head and the same time we drill. Piece of cake. Let's get to the head. The OD of the cylinder head is approximately one and a half inches, 1.50 inches in diameter. Since it's a casting and it's an irregular surface, uh, some low spots, some high spots, I am not going to indicate the casting. I put a piece of uh, inch and a half diameter scrap stock in the chuck. I'll indicate that and then I will put the cylinder head in based on where the jaws are preset. I'm not even going to touch the casting itself. A couple of thousandths is close enough. I'm going to move the tailstock up and use the face of the tailstock to align the face of this part. I ran a very coarse file over the back of this so I'm not going to locate uh, on a high spot. It is relatively flat and I trust it.
I know I have to take about 90 off the face of this by the time I'm done. So that's about how far I'm going to set the spindle from the face of the chuck. Pressure from the inside. Snap the part against the face of the tailstock. Resecure it. Snug it up. Get the tailstock out of town. Let's check it out. First thing I'll do is face it down to the 218 thickness and establish the zero face for the cylinder locating boss. Two eighteen is target thickness on the print. Two thirteen. All right. It's not like missing a dimension by a hundred and eighty thousand saying it's intolerance. Two ten. I would say we quit there. Took 45 off the face of that. Close enough. This particular thickness you have 23 thousandths total tolerance. I am 8 thousandths into that. Going to go 31 on the step using a TPG K68 insert with a zero radius nose. Shoot for one inch. This is an extremely shallow protrusion here. If you have any doubt whatsoever what size it is, fit it to the cylinder. Two and a half more, see where we got. This goes on the end of the cylinder opposite the gland cutout. Oh, that's a beautiful thing right there. I like it. Face it off. Done correctly, this little cap should now fit on the end of the cylinder opposite the valve gland feature, and the gasket material should fit over top of that boss. It does. Okay, let's drill some holes. In preparation for the bolt holes, I've taken the two gaskets that I punched out before and I put them on the back of the turn slug here. Now there is a very mild protrusion on this. Not much at all, but it's there. In order to get a good seal against the gasket surface got one of these a little piece of scrap aluminum one inch end mill just plunged it right down in there this will now sit on here and locate in that hole 
double stick tape on the back stick it to the fixture track it put the part on clamp it drill away let's do it Now for what this model is, you can probably just indicate the OD of this part if you wanted to. Even get it close by eye. But it is the technique that I want you to see. More than anything else. To truly drive features from another feature, you need to be able to pick up on that feature. And you've seen me do it on other parts here can't reach it, create something you can reach, and then locate the part on that. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I've also positioned my hole pattern so that the 0 and 6 o'clock holes are the initial holes and the other ones will straddle the clamps. I'll start it with a 1 8 drill, finish it with an end mill so I cut the gasket paper cleanly. Let's do it. Small spot fish initially just to double check your visual alignment. Once you're pleased, have at it. One forty is the finished diameter. Let's get something a little smaller than that to start. One twenty-eight pilot hole. Now I'm going to drill through till I sell the aluminum. I'll know I'm deep enough. We're going to do 140 diameter through, then we're going to do a 218 spot face, six places. Spot face just to clean up for the screw head. No specific depth, just clean it up. All right, I'm gonna say, let's take this off the fixture here, take it over to the bench. And oh my God, I just walked over to the bench to make some space for the next shot. And I gotta tell you, my blood ran cold. We are good with the part, absolutely, but I want to show you what I saw and you can tell me if your blood runs cold at the same time. But we're going to just take it over here and lay it on the table and say, well, this is what the part looks like afterwards. Oh, wait a minute. Bah, 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 bah. There's supposed to be two gaskets underneath that cylinder head and there's only one. So thank you very much. We'll just make that one go away and pretend I never saw that for now. Ah, killing me. Going to have to put that back on, set that back up, and get them holes in there, because I am not happy right now. Ah, it's a good thing I'm in a good mood, or I'd really be best. Anyway, this is what it looks like when it's done. Spot faces are nice and clean. The spot faces are central to the elevated rib. And I am very pleased with that. And with any kind of luck, we have six very clean holes in the one gasket that's underneath of it.
I just couldn't help myself. I had to screw this thing together and check out the alignment from my particular process. I'm looking right here side to side. Very symmetrical. I expect the top to be proud because there is a large ugly cast mark right there. Otherwise I am very pleased with that alignment. And not just plain looks cool. I don't know man. That's just I'm I'm having a good time with this. In case you haven't noticed. Alright, there you go. Cylinder head complete. Digging it. Thanks for watching.